Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build your own Minecraft server using AWS or uh, Amazon Web Services. Go ahead and head to just the AWS Amazon.com. It's the AWS console. Um, I'll put a link in the description for that. Uh, and then you're going to want to sign into the console. If you don't already have an account, you're going to need to create an AWS account. It's pretty self-explanatory and straightforward. Once you get to the AWS dashboard, you're going to want to go to the top search bar and search for EC2 instance. Oops. The EC2 instances are owned by Amazon and essentially what they are is Amazon has computers um, that are basically their servers that you can use um, for whatever you want. Let's go ahead and go to instances. And once you get to um, here, you're gonna wanna go ahead and go to launch instances. This is where we're gonna create our new EC2 instance. Um, so once you're in here, it's really important which one you click. Um, you're gonna wanna use the Amazon Linux 2 AMI um, type and you'll notice that it is also free tier eligible which means that if you've signed up for AWS just now you get whole year basically um, access to the free tier of AWS um, so go ahead and select that and then once you've selected that you're gonna want to select um, which um, computer you want to use how powerful do you want your computer to be um, so if you want to use the T2 Micro, you can. Um, I would recommend using something a little bit bigger. I use a T2 Medium for my server. Um, four gigs of RAM is just really helpful when I have, you know, five or six people on. Um, but if you're not planning on having that many people, you could settle for either the T2 Micro or the T2 Small. Um, but just for this tutorial, we're going to set up the T2 Medium. As you can see, um, the, the memory is here, which is another... Uh, term for RAM so we have four gigs of RAM and then two CPUs on this one um, next you can go to uh, configure instance details you can go ahead and just skip through this part and head to the next part you can go ahead and keep moving on through that you don't need to add any tags um, now the security group um, is important uh, but we're actually going to come back to this later so uh, go ahead and just click through this as well and then you should have everything set up, so you should be good to launch. Um, now, you're going to want to create uh, create a new key pair because you will not have the option to create an existing. Um, so you can call this whatever you want. I'm just gonna call this Minecraft example um, server and then key. And then you want to download that, and that's going to go into your downloads folder. Um, and then after that, you can go ahead and just launch the instance. It takes a little bit of time to launch. So um, you can see it's pending right now. Next, what you're going to want to do is go to um, Minecraft and download the Minecraft server. Um, so we can just do Minecraft server download. Um, and then it'll just take you directly to their site where you can download the server. Um, <clears throat> Go ahead and just click on that. It'll download. It may ask you if you want to keep the file or not, if it's uh, harmful or not. Um, it's totally safe, so go ahead and click keep. And then we should be able to start setting up the server. Now that the server is downloaded for Minecraft and you have your key, you're going to want to go ahead and open the command prompt. So to find the command prompt, you can either type CMD or the full command prompt in the bottom left um, search window. Um, I normally just do CMD. And then I threw my stuff on the desktop. Um, yours will probably be in your download folder if you haven't moved it yet. That being said, you can easily uh, move it to the desktop. It's still just as easy to follow along with this tutorial. If yours are on the desktop, you're going to want to do CD, which is change directory. Um, and a directory is basically the folder or the file system on your computer. So your desktop or downloads folder would be a directory, same as your documents folder. So I'm going to CD into desktop. If you are not, if you did not put yours on the desktop, just CD into downloads. It should be the exact same thing. We'll CD into desktop though for this tutorial. And then if you type DIR, you should be able to see everything within that directory. Um, so if you look, we have server.jar and Minecraft example server key pen. 
or pen file. So those are those two files there. So now that you have this all set up, we're gonna have to SSH into your server. So let's go back to our AWS console. And if you'll notice back on these security rules, one of the inbound rules is, oops, uh, port 22. Port 22 is the main port used for SSHing into a server. Um, so because we have uh, port 22 here, we can SSH in. I'm gonna split the screen in half here. Find your public IPv4 DNS address. You're gonna wanna copy this, and we'll paste that in just a second. But for now, you're gonna wanna SSH-I, and dash I is the um, argument to pass in your key. So now you can type in your key um, file name. Now, uh, CMD is, or commit, the command prompt is pretty powerful, so if you type in the first part and just hit tab, it'll auto-complete the rest. Next, you're gonna want to put in the user that you will be acting as when you SSH into the server. All the users are the same when you set up a new server with an EC2 instance, so it's just EC2-user, pretty self-explanatory. And then we put an at um, to separate the user and uh, the public IPv4 DNS address. So now you can right click and it'll automatically paste what you copied before. Um, and that is that address. So this is what we need to get into um, the remote computer. So now go ahead and hit enter and, um, whoops, we'll hit enter. It's gonna ask you if you want to continue, you do wanna say yes. And now you are actually in a separate computer via your um, command prompt. So you're on the server that you just created. The commands are a little bit different um, in here because this is a Linux based machine, but it's um, pretty easy. Instead of DIR, you do LS to see what's inside your directory. Because this is a new server, there's nothing inside our directory. Um, so we're going to create a new folder. We're gonna do MKDIR, and then we're going to do um, I just like to call mine Minecraft server. So um, MK stands for make, whoops, I can't spell server, there we go. MK stands for make and then DIR is directory. So you're making a new directory. So if we hit enter, now if you LS, um, which is um, I think list, it's just fancy for list. You can do L and it's the same thing, but um, now you'll see that we have a new directory in there, which is our Minecraft server. A directory is a fancy term for a folder. Um, now that we have that, we need to install Java so that we can run our server file. Okay, so to install Java, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you're just gonna do sudo, which is gives you admin privileges, yum, install, uh, and then you wanna do Java, and then you can just add your version that you wanna install here. So I'm just gonna do uh, 0.8, um, and you can put any version here, but then you hit enter, and it should install Java. It's gonna ask you, is this okay, um, Y, D, or N? You wanna type Y because that stands for yes, and just hit enter to continue and complete that installation process. Okay, now the process is complete. Oops. Uh, we have Java installed. So now you can do Java-version just to make sure that it did install. Um, and you can see there that we have our version of Java. If nothing shows up, that means it didn't install properly and you're gonna to need to retry. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to get our server.jar file onto this server because right now it's on our desktop on our personal computer, but it's not on this EC2 instance. So to do that, we're gonna pop open another command prompt window um, and we're just gonna pop this right here. Now you're gonna do the same command or pretty close to the same command that you did last time. So we need to CD wherever our or, um, <clears throat> key and server file are. So mine are again on the desktop. Um, and then instead of SSH, we're gonna do SCP. So this is for file transferring. But you can do the exact same thing that you did um, with the SSH file. So if we do dash I and then we um, get our Minecraft, example server key.pem file. Uh, and then you want to, um, this is where it gets slightly different. You're gonna put the file that you want to transfer. So we want to transfer our server file to the EC2 instance. So we're gonna do server dot, um, well it should autocomplete, it's dot jar. Um, 
And now you can do the same thing that we did earlier with the user and then let's see if I still have it pasted. I do not, so we will hop back over here and just copy that and paste it there. Now, before you hit enter, there is one more thing you need to do. Um, you need to put a colon uh, and then where you want to put this server file on the server because it, it doesn't know where to put it if you don't tell it where to put it. So we want to put it in our home directory under whatever user we're using, which in this case is always going to be the ec2-user. Uh, and then we want to put it in that new directory that we had just previously created called, uh, I think it was Minecraft server. Uh, and then you hit enter. It may ask you yes or no. Nope, looks like it didn't because we already SSH'd in and it'll show you the progress bar um, or the progress percent of how long it's taking to transfer. It shouldn't take too long. It should be a pretty quick transfer. So we'll give that a second to transfer. All right, so as you can see, it is finished with 100% transferred. So here's the cool thing we can do. If we hop back over to our other command prompt, um, we can now, um, well, we'll ls, we can see our Minecraft server. We'll cd, which is change directory again, into Minecraft server, and it again auto will, com will auto complete. Now, if you do ls to list what's inside your directory, you can actually see that server.jar file, which is what we transferred up, which is super nifty. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to run the server file so that we can get everything set up. So um, if you hop back over to the Minecraft server download page, it'll show you exactly the command you need in order to run that server file. So what you're going to want to do is copy this command over to here and you can just right click and it'll paste it in. Now there's a few things you want to change before you hit enter. First of all, our server file is not called Minecraft server.1.1.1. 16.4 uh, we just all we have right now is server so we're just going to delete all this and type server there uh, another thing that you might want to change is how much ram you are dedicating to um, this server so um, this is a pretty small amount of ram we're going to change this to g for gigabytes and then we're just going to do uh, i'm going to do three gigabytes we'll change this to g for gigabytes and i'm going to do this as for three as well. You want to keep them consistent. Um, and now that you have all that set up, we can go ahead and run that. Now it's going to take a second to process, but you should get an error when you run this, and that's okay. It says failed to load properties from file server properties, failed to load EULA text. You need to agree to the EULA text in order to run the server. So if you'll look before when we listed what was in our directory, all we had was the server.jar. Now if we type ls, we now have um, three more things, which is server properties, logs, and EULA text. Um, in order to get our server to run, you need to agree to the terms of service that Minecraft provides. Um, and the way they do that is through a text document. So in Linux, you can edit a text document through the terminal using vim, um, and you can just type vi eula.txt. That's going to open that, and um, you'll see that we are in this really, really retro looking text editor. Uh, when you're in here, you're just going to look down, and you can see right here that this is where um, it's set to false. So you can't actually change any of the values in here unless you type I for insert. Um, so we hit I, and then you can delete that and just type true. Now hit a escape, which gets us out of insert mode, so we can go back to typing commands. Um, now to save the file, you're going to want to do um, colon, and then W is save, um, and then Q is quit, because we don't need to do anything else in this file. Then you can hit the explanation point to um, force it or pseudo it. Okay, so now that we have modified that, you should be able to run your server again, and it shouldn't have any problems booting up. But before we run the server, I'm going to um, jump into the server properties real fast. So if you want to edit the server properties, you can just vi into server.properties and hit enter. Now here are all the properties that will affect your server during gameplay. So um, you can see PVP is true, um, enable command block is false, max players are 20. Now you can change any of these. So um, it's the same as what we did last time when we edited the terms of service. So um, uh, let's say that, uh, you know, I don't want to force um, the game mode. I, let's see, 
um, view distance. I don't want it to just be 10. Now, if you chose a smaller server, you should probably leave it at 10, otherwise your server will get overwhelmed. But if you have one about this big, I'm gonna bump it up to 16 because that's a little small. So remember we hit I to insert, then you do escape, then colon, W for save, and Q for quit, then the explanation pipe to force it. So now that you know how to change your server properties, we should be good to go ahead and start the server. I'm gonna quit that. So now, um, instead of copying and pasting that command again, you can hit up and actually scroll through your previous commands. Um, so here's our server command. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Now, something to note while we're booting this up is that you'll notice that we're starting Minecraft server on port 25565. We are not going to be able to access that Minecraft server from our computer unless we enable this port in our security group. So this is preparing the spawn area. It's at 0%, but while that's loading, let's hop back over to our EC2 instance. In our EC2 instance, you're gonna need to pull this up and scroll down on your security and then look for this, um, the inbound rules, which I'm gonna actually maximize this for now while the other thing's loading. And you're gonna notice that all we have available is port 22. Okay, so in order to change our inbound security group rules, we're gonna to need to click on the current security group that we have selected for our EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and click on that. And then you'll notice we have inbound rules here. If you want to edit the outbound rules, you could go here. But for now, we just need inbound rules. Go ahead and edit inbound rules. Now you want to add a rule. It needs to be custom TCP. Uh, and then we need that Minecraft port that we saw earlier. So uh, you can hop back over here actually, and you can see that it's just that 25565. So if we copy that, <clears throat> oh, and it looks like our server completed. We can head back over here. Oh, and I'm sorry, you just right click to copy within the um, terminal. You can paste that right there. So 25565, if you can't copy it, yours will be exactly the same. Just um, type in 25565. Now after that, we're gonna to wanna to put in the same thing we have up here, which is just any and all IP addresses. So go ahead and click that and save the rules. So now our security groups are updated. And if we look back over here, our server has successfully created a spawn area and started, which means all we have left to do is to open up Minecraft. So if we open Minecraft, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are using the same version that you have for your server. So now that we have Minecraft open, you're gonna to go to multiplayer. Um, and then what you are going to want to do is add server. Now you can call the name, whatever you wanna call it. So you can say my awesome Minecraft server, doesn't matter. Now in the server address, this is where we're going to need to go back to the AWS console. So if we open this back up, you're gonna to wanna to go back to your instances <clears throat> and then um, you're gonna to want to go all the way over to public IPv IPv4 address. So if you double click that and control C to copy, you can hop back over to Minecraft and control V to paste that in there and then hit done. And then that's it. So now you'll see that it has a connection and you can have up to 20 players. If you change that, you can have up to more. But if you double click it, you should be able to join your server without any problem. And there you go, you have your own Minecraft server. Now, a few things that'll help you with the Minecraft server. Um, one, you'll notice that I don't have access to any cheats. So if I want to go into creative, I cannot on my own. That's pretty easy to do. Um, if you hop back over to your terminal, if you've left that open, you can actually type any command you want in this terminal. So if I type op down cuckoo, that's going to make me an operator and I hit enter. And now you've made down cuckoo server operator, which means I can run any cheats I want to. So now I can be in creative and here's the server. To stop the server, you do not just exit out of here. You actually have to type STOP to stop, and then it will stop your entire server.